Hi there everyone and welcome back to my channel. So I've got something a little bit different today. So I thought that I would start a series where I basically talk about books that have inspired me. Now I read a hell of a lot of books and I really do feel like reading books is just the best way for me to get inspiration for anything in my life, whether that be witchcraft, whether that be new tarot spreads, whether that be writing poetry or drawing or dressing. Reading is just such an amazing way of getting inspiration for basically everything. And the books that I tend to read are actually not novels. I'm actually really, really bad at reading novels because I'm an incredibly slow reader. I don't know why. I mean, I'm an English literature graduate and currently studying an MA, but I suck at reading. I really do. I'm terrible. But the kind of books that I tend to like are sort of non-fiction-ish like reference books that are just about generally interesting topics. So the book that I'm going to be looking at today is this one. You might have seen it before, it is fairly popular. It's Breverton's Phantasmagoria, which is quite an intense name. Now this is the one that I wanted to start off with because it's probably the one that's given me the most inspiration I would say because it's just, I mean just look at it. As soon as I saw it I was like that is me in a book. I need to get this. So it's a compendium of monsters, myths and legends. So on the back of the book it says a cornucopia of mythical places, people, beings and beasts. Where does the bogeyman come from? What creatures feast on faithful men? How do you defeat how do you defeat a minotaur? What really riles a dragon? Where would you find real life werewolves? What happened to Atlantis? From dragons, vampires, werewolves and fairies, to flying carpets, lost cities and modern day mysteries, this delightful compendium of over 250 weird and wonderful legends, myths and monsters will entertain and astound anyone enthralled by the unknown. And that's me, and I'm guessing that's probably you as well, that's why you clicked on this video. So we'll just have a little look inside. So here we have the contents page. So yeah, it's absolutely gorgeously laid out is this title page. And the sections are Mysterious, Weird and Magical People, Chapter 1. Then we've got Mythical Monsters, Ghosts and Things That Go Bump in the Night. Then Magical Places of Legend and Reality, Flying Monsters, Mysteries, Odd Happenings, Strange Sightings and Legends. Then Mysteries of the Deep, then Strange Artifacts, Buildings, Maps and Writings, and then Tales of Secret Treasure. And finally, we have The Reality of Legends and Myths. And then we've got a references page and an index as well. Now, <laughs> those, I mean, that is just, it pretty much encapsulates like everything. And it's just, it's got things in it from um, Henrietta Lacks all the way to I don't know, Loch Ness Monster, you know, it's such a a mix of real people and real things and real happenings and things that are probably just complete legend and myth. It's even got a section in there on birds and, you know, birds within folklore and mythology, as in like real birds, you know, like ostrich, ravens and whatever. So when you go through it, it's in alphabetical order and as you go through it's got just all the ordinary ones just kind of set out like this and then it's got these kind of spotlighty type ones I think it might be just to break up the visuals um, but some of them are clearly very um, like here fairies so that's obviously like a more common one or a more important one one that people might actually look up so we've got a big proper section for fairies on their own there we've got section on the green man, the holy blood, um, doppelganger, what a doppelganger is, the phenomenon of one, um, Amelia Earhart, we've got, yep, the immortal woman here, I get Henrietta Lacks there, Leonardo da Vinci, <laughs> uh, something I'll flip through, oh yes, a section on Cyclops, which is another highlighted one, again, that is quite an a well-known one. A chimera. Big, big section on dragons. And then here we have a page of mythical monsters. So just, and that really nice way to kind of break it up. 
basically. And oh God, it's just absolutely fantastic. Um, got a section on labyrinths. <laughs> Poltergeists, the knocking spirits and a little cute drawing or creepy drawing, depending on how you feel about it. I just love how it um, blurs the line between myth and reality and that's kind of right up just the kind of thing that I absolutely love. And here we have mythical sea creatures. So how I tend to use this is basically just open it up and just at a random page and just flick through. Sometimes I will be looking for a specific thing, which is really great to give kind of an overview. The information in it is, I think, the perfect balance between being detailed enough that you can really kind of get a grasp of what it's talking about without giving you way too much information because it is just a reference book. You know, it's got so many different things in there that it has to talk about that it's going to be kind of impossible to, you know, go into great detail about every single thing. But I think it does a really good job of also gauging what people are interested in, what people will be looking at and giving more information on those things. So while I'm writing my current poetry pamphlet, because if you don't know, I am a poet, I am actually using this book a lot as a reference and so many of the ideas that I've got for my poems are come from this book. So here, basically, open the page and we've got crows as guides. Oh, this is the bird section I was talking about as well. So, crows are monogamous, long-lived, long and are possibly the most intelligent members of the bird family. The ancients noted that they took responsibility for feeding their chicks and escorted their young in flight. The crow's voice predicted rain, and the crow was said to be able to re reveal ambushes and foretell the future. Now, that is just such a... I mean, there's just so much in that very first paragraph, and there's like probably like four times that amount there. And... There's so much that you can kind of pull out of that and that, you know, I could to write a poem. You know, just that feeling because it's relatable. And I think that's the thing, like, when you go through something like this, you find bits of all these different weird beings within you. you I Well, I don't know about you, but I, <laughs> I do. And I feel like I can really relate to them in some kind of strange way. And I think w when you're making art, that's such a powerful force that you really need to tap into in order to bring things like these weird and wonderful beings into the real world and to make people see them and relate to them and think about them and you know so that they're not completely forgotten and that's another reason why i really love the mixture of real and real animals and real people and mythical ones it just really kind of brings it all to life really and makes it seem real and i just absolutely love that Another way that you can use this, which I haven't done yet, but I shall, and when I do I shall show you, probably on Instagram, so if you don't follow me there, shameless plug, it's um, at rgwoodwitch, and basically there are so many illustrations in here, that, and so many amazing beings that it's like, you will never run out of inspiration for drawing in here, ever, 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 it's, there's just so much of it. It's just, like, I could just copy these drawings all day long, like, look at him. Like, like that, I mean, just to, as kind of case studies, another perfect example there. Just as case studies to copy and draw, I just think, yeah, it's just amazing. So yeah, it's got a hell of a lot in it, really. And I mean, I'm nowhere near reading, like finished reading all of it, which I love. And I think that's why I enjoy reference books slightly more than novels, because it's like there's always something else. You know, you don't tend to read them cover to cover. So it's like you don't just read it once and then it's over with. You know, it'll, it'll be useful to you throughout your entire life. And this one certainly will be. And it's gorgeous. So it's one of those books you just can't throw away because, I mean, look at that cover. <laughs> like, I just can't even. This is so not sponsored by the way, obviously I'm probably going to have like <laughs> 10 views on this video, but I appreciate all 10 of you, so thank you. <laughs> Basically this series, I just wanted to kind of very, quite quickly, not, not go too in depth, but give you a little showcase and a bit of an overview of just a bunch of books that I found, find really inspiring and then, you know, if you feel like it would be something that 
you would like to have or like to have a look at, then go for it. Because I just think that, you know, what's life without a bit of <laughs> bit of inspiration, bit of intrigue, bit of bit of fun, basically. So that's really all I wanted to say about this. Um Yeah. <laughs> so I really do hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that this is a series that I continue for a long time. God knows I've got enough books to do it for <laughs> until I die. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one.